I'm making good progress touching up this RCA 630TS cabinet. If you recall, this is the one the set came with, with the mismatched top of this center panel is walnut and the sides are mahogany and it's pretty dinged up here and there. Well, I've got another one that's in much better shape, so I thought for now I'll put the restored chassis in this cabinet and eventually get around to restoring the other cabinet as well. So what I've been doing is a technique I've shown before of touching up the old finish where I lightly sand it down, fill in dings or any color loss with a stain or a little touch up kit I've got and then uh, start putting on new coats of lacquer. Well, the way I typically fill in, say, the voids and the lacquer from alligatoring is to use a lacquer sanding sealer. Well, I ran out of the spray stuff when I went around looking for some where I usually get it and nobody around me has it anymore. An either can or spray variety. I could order some online, but I also noticed the price has gone quite a bit. Uh, typically about $10 per spray can. I was getting it for $4 not too long ago. And perhaps that's them uh, the EPA cracking down because it, these have a high VOC content, volatile organic compound, and it can be bad for the environment and whatever. Uh, but then I was more curious about what is this stuff exactly? Is there an alternative and is it even necessary? Because I've noticed well, pretty clearly when you look at this stuff, it's got stuff in it. It's got a white substance suspended in it that tends to settle down and you're supposed to stir it up before you use it. So what is that? Well, I'd always read that sanding sealer not only provides a good barrier between incompatible finishes, say there's a little bit of um, residue from stripper or something in the wood or maybe the stain isn't compatible with lacquer or whatever, Lacquer sanding sealer makes a good barrier between them. It's compatible with lacquer and it will make a barrier between the contamination. Uh, but also, that turns out that white stuff is zinc stearate, which adds body to it, so it fills in those voids faster. And it also provides a lubricant when you sand it, because the stuff is really easy to sand. So I'm thinking, well, that all sounds good. Fills in fast, dries quick, easy to sand and uh, seals contamination, well, there's a downside to all that. This is weaker than a good nitrocellulose-based lacquer. So, if you look at the, quote, pro <laughs> refinishing sites, they really don't like this stuff. Okay, well, if the, if the pros don't like it, and I can't even get it locally anymore, well, what else can you do? Well, there's shellac, I've always known about that, too. It's also a little bit pricey, upwards of 10 bucks for a spray can. At least I can get spray cans and readily available, but I don't really like shellac that much. Uh, I think it's kind of like kind of gummy and it, it's a pain to sand. Uh, so uh, I also read that, well, do you even need sealer? I guess if the wood is clean or for what I'm doing, if putting new lacquer on old, you don't really need it. So. For this, I've just been going with coats of lacquer. Now, the downside is, stuff takes longer to cure and it's harder to sand. It's both physically tougher and it, it tends to gum up the sandpaper. But, I've got plenty of it, both brush and spray, so that's what I'm going with for now. Now, I also can find plenty of sanding sealer and can form that's, say, water-based. I use it on my Filco 60MB cabinet. Works fine, it's just that it, none of it comes in spray. It's brush only. Well, even with a fine brush, uh, at least for, for me, I end up with brush marks, and you got to sand those out. So, you know, again, more labor. The spray is always great, because if you get a good spray with no junk falling on it, you don't have to sand much, which is a big bonus in my mind. So, anyways, what I've been doing is, after sanding this down, sprayed on a couple coats of lacquer, a little more sanding, and I put on one more cut of lacquer, and that's where things stand right now. What I want to do now is pause, and instead of spraying anymore on, I'm going to take a small paintbrush and a can of quality gloss brushing lacquer. And just dab this on to fill in voids as needed. 
and there aren't many luckily uh, but see here that there's still some alligatoring and uh, I figure between some selective dabbing of lacquer around here and then spraying a couple more coats sand it down be pretty well filled in that's what I did on the top side so far so this this I'm really happy with very very smooth some major dings are still here but I'm just gonna let those go I'm not trying to make this perfect just better than it was So, got the top done. I got the center panel done that's up in the attic. Curing right now. And uh, a little bit more work to do on this side. Then I got to do the other side panel. And on the front, I want to leave these areas alone for now. I do not have any reproduction decals on hand. So, I'll just leave those alone. I can always work on this, these little sections any day. And these sections, I've been trying to figure out what color they are. I got some chips here and there. I want to take a little brush and touch them up. This this area is not too bad. You can see there's some more chips here. I'm thinking brown mahogany. And it's not opaque. It's got some translucent to it. So I've got both. I've got both opaque and transparent brown mahogany. So I think I'll just start dabbing on the transparent. Now I only have them in spray can form, but I'll just spray a little bit like into the cap of the can. And then dab it on. And then uh, that hopefully will be that. And I can put this thing all back together. I put little drops of clear lacquer over all the voids and defects and cracks that I could find. Let it set up overnight and now I'm sanding it flush. And I'll take it back up in the attic and spray a couple more coats on it. After I sanded down those high spots caused by my brushing on little drops of lacquer to fill in the voids, I spread on a couple more coats. And it's looking pretty good, but I expect this will shrink up a little, so I'm going to let this sit for at least a couple days. In the meantime, I'm going to flip this over and start on the other side, which I haven't touched yet. Okay, here's the other side. Pretty much unchanged since I got this set uh, years ago. All I've done with it since is clean it a little bit and put a little furniture polish on. But it's been years since I put any more polish on it. So it's kind of dirty and faded. And this is the more damaged side too. You can see we've got some dings in here and there. I suppose I could try steaming those out. Or I could just fill them in with lacquer. And uh, this side also has a bit more damage on the trim. Again, I could try steaming it out. And along this edge here, it looks like the toner is completely gone. So here's, here's what I meant by it seems to be, uh, well, I'm sure it's a dye-based toner. And I think um, Mohawk's Brown Mahogany would be a pretty darn good match. Well, it also looks like this is, well, yeah, it's definitely darker. Huh, maybe it is opaque after all. Well, I do have a little bit left of, they call it um, dark mahogany, and it's opaque. And it turns out looking pretty darn dark. That's what I used for the trim down here on this helicraft. So the lighting's terrible, but that's what this is around here, which looks almost black. Move this out of the way. Yeah, this stuff here. Don't have a whole lot left, but probably enough but at least I can get a little on the tip of a brush for touch up on spots like that corner I got plenty of brown mahogany for this stuff I want to retain as much as the original color as I can nice chunk out of the bottom there alright so first thing I'll do is uh, give this a light sanding and hmm you know I'm not gonna mess with steaming they're not that deep and I don't want to risk damaging this, this finish or raise the grain or anything with with using steam so you know my, my goal is to uh, make this look better but not alter the color or screw up the original uh, cut finish in uh, any way so I'm not gonna steam it I 
I went back and forth in my mind on what to do about those dents, and I decided to try a little experiment. Rather than full-on steam with an iron, what I did was take a Q-tip, get a damp, put a little dab of water into each divot, let it sit there for a while, kind of soak in, and then the cracks in the lacquer that are down in those indentations. Then I took a heat gun on low and passed it over the areas to heat, to heat it up and kind of drive the moisture into the wood. And then I did repeated applications where I just dabbed on a little bit of moisture while I heated it up with the heat gun. And it seems to have worked. Um, not completely flush with the surface, but certainly less dented in when they were than that than they were rather, and uh, no discoloration that I can see. So that's as much as I'm going to do on these. And uh, I think when I put on the lacquer, they should disappear rather well. I put some dollops of lacquer into the dings, sanded this whole thing down, and then I just sprayed a couple coats of lacquer on a little while ago. And I can see right away that this side is definitely worse than the other side. You can see even after the sanding and a couple coats of lacquer, very noticeable alligatoring. So this is going to take a little bit of work to fill in I pretty much finished filling in the voids and I sprayed a couple coats of Mohawk Colossus and I'm waiting for it to set up the weather has not been cooperating lately we've been going between hot and cool and a bigger problem is humidity like right now it's getting quite humid so I probably won't be able to spray tomorrow, maybe the next day, I don't know, and it's also being kind of cooler, I think it might only be 75 tomorrow, so it takes longer for this stuff to fully cure, so I don't know, I'll keep plugging away at it, but it could be a week or two before I'm completely done with this cabinet. Meantime, here's the center board, this I am completely done with other than rubbing it out, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It'll look even better once I rub it out and get some wax on it. So I'm hoping that that is what the rest of the cabinet's going to look like when it's done. Now that the main surfaces are done, in other words, the top panel, the side panel, the lid, I'm working on touching up all the trim. I've used a combination of techniques. In some areas I spray toner into a cap took a small brush and dabbed it on. Other areas wiped on a little stain. And in other areas, like right along the edge here, where it was worn down to the lighter colored wood, I ended up just using a Sharpie. It's a brown Sharpie and just <laughs> ran it right along the edge there. If the color's not quite right, I can always go over it with a red Sharpie or black and kind of blend it in. So after I apply it, going at kind of an angle, like using the side of the tip and keeping my hand against this as a guide, or actually I did it more like this, and just went along. And then I took my finger and wiped it along to kind of blend it in. And uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. Now I'll let all these touch-ups dry for a day or two and then start putting on some final coats of lacquer. So hopefully this will be done sometime next week.